What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you 10 different tips of how to use Rider with Unity. I'm gonna be showing you some of the power of Rider with Unity and how is it that it's so integrated into Unity and why so many developers are moving to Rider. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so the first thing that I want you to do is go into JetBrains.com Rider Downloads and then select the download for the operating system that you're currently using. You're gonna get a 30 day trial and obviously after that, you're gonna to have to get the license. But then once you download it and install it, you're gonna be able to get to where I am right now. So if you go ahead and search for Rider, or if you have a shortcut on your desktop, go ahead and open it up. You're gonna see something like this. And it's gonna give you all the different projects if you imported the prior options that you had or either on VS Code or in Visual Studio. So I'm gonna leave that there and then we're gonna go into Unity, go into Window, Package Manager, and make sure that you search for Writer and then install the plugin that it's called JetBrains Writer Editor. This is gonna be basically the glue between Writer and the Unity Editor. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. Then go into Edit, Preferences, and make sure that in the external tools, it's the external script editor is Writer 2021.2.2 or the version that you currently have. You, if you're using Visual Studio, you probably have that selected, just change that to Writer. Or if you have VS Code, you probably have that selected, just change it to Writer. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. If you have everything set up correctly, you should be able to just go ahead and double click in one of your scripts and, and it's going to open the project for you inside of Writer. So this is gonna be the editor that we're going to be using, at least I'm gonna be using from now on. So on the left side, you have you know all your files, script scenes, resources, and it's cool because you can see the Unity scenes in here. You can see, you know, all different folders, textures, and then different packages that are available in here. And then the other thing that I can also do is on this window, we have also the editor itself. So we have all of our coding here. There's a lot of different helpful tips that you're gonna see that are similar to what we see in Visual Studio, which I'm gonna keep up in here as a references. So in Visual Studio, you can look at the references, you can look at my commits, you can look at the author changes, and then also a lot of different things that Visual Studio does for you. But in Writer, you can also, you also get a lot of that and more. So Writer has a lot of integrations with Unity, which, you know, as a Unity developer, it's going to save you a lot of time because we don't have to jump back and forth between the Unity editor and Writer in order to load things in the game. So it's gonna make it, you know, so that you can program a lot faster. So the first thing that I wanna show you, which is gonna be my first tip, is if you wanna add a C-sharp script, you can basically right click in here, go to add, and you're gonna have different options. If you wanna add a script, you can add a script, give it a name. If you wanna add a scriptable object, you can do that. If you wanna add a state machine or a play mode test, you can do that as well. And the other thing you can also do is if we wanna add a shader, say I wanted to do a shader, I can just say test shader and then hit enter. And as soon as you do that, it's gonna tell you that, you know, it's, do you wanna add the files to Git? Obviously we do, because we wanna commit everything. And it's gonna give you a standard shader so that you can modify it. Then number two, IntelliSense show you the namespace when you're typing in. And what that means, that means that if I were to say something like private, and let's say that we wanted to type something in, sometimes if we do, let's see, if I do mesh type in this case, it tells you that mesh is in the OVR plugin. If I were to scroll down in here, you're gonna see that in addition to the classes that match the word mesh, I can also see the namespaces, which is really, really powerful. So let me try something. Let's do, I'm gonna do a serializable fill. And then in this case, I'm gonna do a game object. And then I'm also going to say, it's gonna be my test game object. And I'm gonna keep it, let's go ahead and keep it null. And we're gonna get back into, into this in just, in just a second. But that's how you can basically see the namespaces of classes. If I wanted to, let's say clone this, so we can say this is gonna be number two. Let's say that this one is going to be my mesh render, and then I can say that that one is going to be number, and say number two, that's fine. And you also notice that these two are set to unchanged. I'll explain to you what that is. And then let's go ahead and do one more because I'm gonna show you what the power of Writer. And this is gonna be float. We can say this is gonna be my test game object speed. But in this case, I'm gonna set this to 1.0. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit close and hit save. There we go. I don't know why it popped that up, but it says unchange, unchange, unchange. And that's what's gonna be my next one, my next tip, which is going to be 
what are these on change and how do you actually take advantage of it, right? So if I, if I were to go back into Unity, let's go ahead and go back into the editor. The script that I was modifying was the drone controller. You can see that I have the test game object here. If I wanted to, let's go ahead and say, it's gonna be my center. I anchor, I'm just selecting things randomly just so that I can give you an example. Let's say that on this one, I'm just gonna do, let's do the text. And this one, I'm gonna leave it, let's go ahead and do, actually, instead of 1.0, I'm gonna do 2.0 on the, on the actual flow at speed that I just changed. And this one, I'm just going to do the drone pilot overlay. So if we go back into Writer, you're gonna see that Writer is gonna reload everything right away. It's going to show me that this game object is associated to the roll text. This other game object is associated to another asset. I can also see which scenes is, is that happening on and actually the name of the scene and where is it located, which is very, very powerful. The other thing that is powerful here as well, the default value that I set in here is 1.0. But I also, on the inspector, I set it to 2.0, which is really cool because I can now see, okay, what is the inspector has versus what I have hard-coded into, into the game. So this is really powerful. I can also click on it if I wanted to click on it. I think that'll take me exactly where that is, which is, you know, it highlights the controller, the game object that I had, and also the value is shown in here. I'm gonna go ahead and drag the usage window in here. This is another thing that is really cool too. So I did select, uh, if I go back in here, and we go ahead and double click, and go back into Unity, you're gonna see that it also shows me here, and I can also see where it's actually getting used, which is in the drone controller. The other thing that I also wanna show you, it's going to be the integrated logger. Normally you probably, you know, used to seeing the console here, having to go back and forth between your IDE and also Unity. So let's say, let's do something cooler. Let's say if we go back in here, and we go into the awake meta, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, I wanna do, I wanna debug something. We can say that this is gonna be, okay, hello world, writer is amazing. Right now, normally you would go back and jump into Unity in, in order for you to see that, but what if we wanted to see it right here? And I'm gonna go ahead and hide the warnings because I don't wanna see the warnings, I just wanna see the info. So by the way, these icons in here allow you to see what it's visible and what's not visible. You can clear the log as well. So what I'm gonna do here, if you look at the play, I can hit play. And what we should expect is we should expect to see that message and you can see, hello world, writer is amazing. So this is amazing because I didn't have to go into Unity and do, you know, and do what I just did. So another thing that is also really helpful is the debugger, right? Normally we would, you know, hit a, hit a break point and then attach a debugger, which is very similar to what we do in Visual Studio Code or what we do in Visual Studio. So I'm gonna hit this button right here but I'm not gonna jump into Unity at all. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit that. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna now be able to hit play and it should attach to the debugger right here because I already hit, you know, I already attach it to the Unity engine. But I didn't have to look for the process. I didn't have to do all the extra work that sometimes we have to do with some editors. So what's cool about this is I'm already debugging. I can see so if I were to hit, you also have the debugger options in here. So if I wanted to play, I can play. If I wanted to stop, you also have the step over and you know some of the debugging options available in most of the IDs. So I can see the values. If I wanted to expand this, I can see all the different options that that game object has associated and we can debug our game just to make sure that, you know, if we have an issue, we can find that issue pretty easily. So another thing that we can also do in addition to, you know, debugging, we can also add a watcher and those watchers are something that we obviously do quite a bit if we we're trying to find an issue with our code. So one of the things that you can do is you can click in here and we can either, you can right click in here and add watcher. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a watcher to that. And you're gonna see that as soon as I step over, if I go in here, I gotta get used to the IDE because I haven't been playing with this for, you know, for enough time. And you can see that all the variables is, are in there. I also have access to the immediate windows. If I wanted to access the left hand skeleton, this is another thing that is really cool, right? The intelligence that I have in here is very similar to the intelligence IntelliSense that we get in the code, which is something that I haven't seen in a lot of different editors. And this is, is actually really, really fast too. So let's say I wanted to know the position, I can hit enter, and it's gonna show me the position. If I wanted to know, you know, the position of X, it's going to show me the value of that and then display it. So obviously you can do a lot of things with this. You can toggle it if you don't wanna see it, you can bring it back in. If you don't wanna see the, the immediate window, you know, you can obviously hide that as well. So one of the cool things that I think Ryder did that I haven't seen in any other editor 
is you also have this magnifier. So if I wanted to see what's happening on this line, I can look at what's happening on that line and basically get a sneak peek of what's happening. I can go and look at some of these warnings without actually having to scroll down. So another tool that I use quite a bit in VS Code is the compare. If I wanna use, do a compare of this code right here, let's say that I do something like this. Let's go ahead and go into Notepad. And yes, I'm using Notepad. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that text. I'm gonna put it back in the clipboard and just gonna go ahead and copy and paste. And what I can do here is with that text selected, I can do a compare clipboard. And you're gonna see that it's gonna run a comparison. It's gonna see that there's a difference in there, which is what I just changed, the, the serialized attribute. So that I changed a couple more things. Let's go ahead and do, maybe this is gonna be a mesh. I don't know, something like that. And then we can go ahead and go, perhaps let's select more text in here. We can right click on it and then com compare with clipboard. You're gonna see that this is different, this is different because it's mesh and then also the text on the very bottom. So very powerful, you don't have to add any plugins, it just comes out of the box with Writer. So let's say that I wanted to know in addition to finding the usages by just clicking in here, I can also do in here, right click it and then go in show in Unity. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna find it, it's gonna tell me where it's highlighted and it's gonna tell me exactly where it's located. So I selected a test, test shader, so it show me where the shader is. Let's try that with a different file. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the constants, show in Unity and it's gonna show me exactly where it's at. The last thing that I also like that I think I showed you a little bit at the beginning is the usages in here. So we can see where these actual mono behavior is getting used. So it's getting used on my Oculus Drone Client Hand Tracking Scene. It's getting used on the Oculus Drone Client Unity. It's getting used on the standalone one. I can also look in here for other usages in addition to the scenes. I can see where in the code is getting used and I can also see which scenes are currently consuming that different class. So really helpful and really powerful. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And I'm gonna be making more videos as I learn more about using Writer with Unity. Thank you very much, guys.